Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. I'm in Lightroom today and I'm playing with an image that I took in London a few years ago. And I'm actually building an HDR and uh, I'm working through the edit and I realize there's a couple of tools that I use and I use these tools all the time. But the impact and the difference that these tools make on my final photo is honestly amazing. So I wanted to share that with you. Let's jump into it. This is Lightroom and I've got this bracket set from what's called Leadenhall Market. And it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, it's fairly yellow and kind of red. And so you got to be kind of careful in your edit, I think, because those color tones can get kind of over the top. Uh, anyway, what I did is I took those three and I merged them to HDR and I came up with this photo. Now, let me show you what this photo looked like after it was merged. I've already done some stuff in basic. So my merge photo looked a bit like that. And then I made additional enhancements in the basic tab. And so the first thing, as you can tell, is I cooled it off quite a bit, changed the temperature, adjusted the tint, and then lots of light adjustments here, texture, clarity, and some vibrance and saturation. So a big, big difference, right? Uh, but, and this is a big but, the colors aren't really exactly the way I want them to look. And it's too yellow. And to me, that yellow is kind of bordering on the edge of looking a little bit green. I don't really like that kind of green in this kind of photo. Now, I want to accentuate the warmth and kind of those warmer tones, like the uh, kind of reddish orange. I just want to tone down that yellow a little bit. And there's a couple of tools that I use to do that, several tools, in fact. We're going to go through that. So first things first, I'm here, and I want to go into masking. And the first kind of mask I'm going to get is what's called a color range mask, which, as the name implies, allows you to pick a specific color or range of colors and apply a mask just to those. Well, that is the absolutely perfect tool to start using when I'm trying to adjust this yellowy kind of green. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, uh, with my eyedropper, grab, let's say, that color right there. And it highlights the areas that that color is, uh, is shown in, right? So all of that. Now, I can refine that over here if I want to, but honestly, I'm pretty fine with that. It's pretty much dead on. And so what I want to do is get away from that yellowish kind of green. And so for me, that is a temperature change. I'm going to start by taking the temperature down. And I'm going to go to like a negative 30, uh, 32, something like that. And that helps. But for me, when I want to overcome green, tint is like my best friend for that. So I'm going to go all the way to 53 on tint, which sounds like a lot. And in many cases, that would make it a very magenta looking kind of image. But because I'm starting so far into kind of that yellowish green, when I go so far the other way, it's basically just um, getting it to where it looks kind of almost neutral. I like that quite a bit. And that's really toned that down a little bit. So if you are not using or not familiar with color range masks and you want some more videos about that, let me know. Just leave a comment down below. But it is a fantastic, fantastic masking tool. So before, really that pea green kind of yellowy, which I didn't like, and after, much more subdued. But like I said, I want to continue working on light and color, two things I'm editing throughout really any photo. And the next uh, masking tool that I want to use is, of course, a luminance range or luminosity mask, a fantastic tool that really lets you isolate certain tonal values and just come in and uh, adjust them. So I'm adjusting this mask, and as you can see, it's grabbing the light. Now, Again, if you're not familiar with luminosity mask, I'll come back and do some more videos about that. Leave a comment about that if you'd like more details. But I have done some videos about those in the past. I'll do them again. It's just such a great masking tool. These two masking tools, color range and luminosity mask, just so much power, so much control, and frankly, super easy to use. And it's a, it's a missed opportunity, I think, if you're not using them to really control light and color, which is a huge component of editing in my opinion. So I've got that in place. And now what I want to do is actually, I'm going to increase the brightness of this. So I'm going to do about a 43. I'm going to increase contrast. So maybe a 20, 21, something like that. And I'm bringing the highlights down because they are a little too bright. And so like a negative 28. But the other thing I want to do is in those highlight areas, play with temperature and tint. That's right. So temperature, I'm going to go up a little bit. So about a 15. And tint, I'm going to do about a 25. 
So now if you look at this mask and what it's been able to do for me before, still, believe it or not, even though the color range mask took care of so much of that greenish yellow kind of look, it's still a little bit in that kind of area, if you want to use that term. Uh, it's still a little bit like that, but now with the luminosity mask doubled up on top of the color range mask in a very similar area, boom, I've just got such better look, I think, to the overall colors in that area. Now, I'm going to do a couple of more quick masks just to kind of frame the image, something I like to do. In this case, I'm going to start with a linear gradient here at the bottom, and all I want to do there is just decrease the exposure. And like I said, this is kind of like framing the image. I just want to kind of draw the viewer's eye. I don't want them to get lost uh, too much in the foreground because, let's be honest, not a foreground element here like, like I would often want, especially in a landscape, which I know this isn't one, but... Uh, nonetheless, I'm going to kind of frame that with the light. And then separately, or secondly, after that is a radial gradient. And in this case, I'm going to do something about like this. And this is also just kind of creating a little bit more visual interest in the photo. I'm going to put that about up here. And what I want to do is increase the exposure. So I'm brightening that little center area that I just highlighted. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of texture, so like a 7, and a little bit of clarity, so like a 20. Now, I've already added texture and clarity to the entire photo the first time I used the basic panel. But in this case, I'm isolating that little center area with the radial mask, adding a little bit more just to kind of pop it along with the light. And as you can see, this gives you a little bit more pop in that center. So a little bit darker, and now a little bit brighter. And maybe that's a little bit too bright. I might pull that back just a little bit. You want to be careful you don't want a too, uh, too abrupt of a difference between the area that's uh, getting the increase in exposure and the area that's not. And that's where this section between these two uh, kind of oval shapes comes into play because that's your gradient zone. That's where the effect fades into the rest of the photo. So in my opinion, you want a pretty generous fade there because it'll help and ensure a pretty smooth transition. Okay, so far much, much better, and the mass have really helped. But now I want to get into a couple of things I want to do to really pop the color. And the first thing I'm going to do is in Color Mixer, and I'm going to go grab this blue, and that blue is about right there. And what I want to do is take that saturation down a bit, so like a negative 35. I'm just kind of neutralizing that a little bit. But I'm also going to darken it a little bit, so like a negative 40, 42, something like that. All I'm doing is taking that blue, which I find a little bit distracting. So if you look at the before, pretty blue, right? And uh, after now, a bit more neutralized. So just another thing to kind of neutralize the color. Uh, but now to really enhance the color, because I do want to bring up the warmth and I do want the colors to pop. And for me, that's calibration. It is, that's honestly just the best tool there is. I absolutely love it. So I usually start in blue primary. And I like to go here about a negative 15 or something like that. Uh, but uh, that's on the hue. But on the saturation, I'm going to go mid 30, so like a 35. Now, that does bring back a little bit of the blue. So if you look at the before and the after, it's got a little bit of that blue, but not as much because I neutralized it with a color mixer here a moment ago. Uh, but now in the green primary, I'm actually going to shift this hue to the right about a 19. And then I'm going to drag the saturation to about a 39. And that's just going to give me a little bit nice, uh, a nice color pop. So if you look at the before and the after, it's really popping those warmer tones, which is something I want to accentuate. I just didn't want that greenish yellow. Now you might be thinking, hey, you're dragging the increase in saturation in green. Why is it popping the reds? Well, calibration is a little different. It's adjusting things at the pixel levels, so the RGB values in each pixel, and this is impacting how colors look. I did a video about this. If you'd like more, I'll include it in future videos. Uh, and in red, I'm not going to adjust the amount, or excuse me, the, uh, the hue, but I am going to take the saturation down a little bit, and that's only because I don't want it to be too intense. So before, and let's say like a negative 20, like an after. Now let's look at calibration and what this has done. This is a great tool. I absolutely love it. So if you look at the before, you can see I was able to neutralize some of that greenish yellow, take down some of the blues, and then coming back with the calibration tool. It does bring back a little bit of the blue, and I could adjust that further if I wanted to in Color Mixer, but I'm really popping those warmer tones. So again, before and after, 
gives it a nice little pop to the photo. And honestly, I think that's about it. I'm just gonna wrap this up with a vignette. So I'm about a negative 20 or so here. My midpoint's uh, high 40s. My roundness is you know high 60s, and I generally do about 100 on feathering. So before and after, vignette, typical stuff. Darkens the edges, and it's just drawing a little bit of attention to the center of the photo. And this is an image where you just want the eye to go straight down, kind of take in the lines and look at everything. And then using that radial mass that I did earlier to really pop that center is part of the reason I'm kind of enhancing, or hopefully enhancing the viewer experience. So that is the edit before and after. Massive, massive difference, HDR, but all the mask, color range mask, and of course, luminance mask or luminosity mask, huge, huge difference in controlling the color and the light. Two things I'm always thinking about when I'm editing. And then some minor adjustments to color, like with color mixer, and of course in basic, but the calibration really makes that image pop at the end. That's how I used the uh, tools in this one. If you'd like to see more Lightroom videos, leave a comment down below. I will be back soon with additional ones. It's a great product. I've had so much fun using these masking tools. Luminosity mask, color range mask. You can't go wrong using those on probably just about every photo. They just have such a huge impact. Thanks for watching, my friends. I will be back soon with another one. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.